Hello everybody and welcome back to the Petri Dish. I am hanging out with Softnas and Softnas, I would introduce you individually, but what brings all of Softnas here to Vimon? Well, thank you. We're here at Vimon really to introduce ourselves to the Veeam customer base okay. about who Softnas is and what kind of solutions we bring to the Veeam customer base for the public cloud. Gotcha. And now based on the name, soft NAS. I'm, I'm assuming that it's a software network attached storage. Is that correct? Am I in the right genre here? You are correct there. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> You've got it. I, I would have been concerned <laughs> if it would have been anything else. Uh, but why don't we just start there? Can you guys just give a, a high level look at what your product is, your target customer base, and, and just a little bit about who you are, to be honest? Uh, certainly. Um, the, the product is called soft NAS Cloud, and it's a one product. It's a pure virtual cloud-based um, solution. It's a NAS solution, as you said. We actually have been focusing increasingly on what we call cloud data control, and we're here at the Veeam event actually showcasing one edition of the product, which is our essentials edition of soft NAS cloud. Gotcha, so let's, why don't we take a dive a little deeper there. So clearly cloud, when you say cloud, are you talking about your own cloud? Or are you talking about AWS or Azure, or, or how do you define that? Right, so we actually are architected so that as a virtual appliance, we can run on the public cloud of the, of the uh, customer's choice. So we support AWS and Azure. We also support hybrid cloud so, and private cloud. Gotcha, so that's, is that, is that what you consider your competitive advantage? Or when somebody says, why should I choose SoftNAS? What's your, what's your answer? That, that's actually a great question. And the, the answer is that we provide a private and dedicated environment. So unlike a shared multi-tenant public cloud service, with us you can literally customize and configure your environment on a project by project basis. And the key thing about going to the cloud is being able to optimize for security, for cost and performance. And you can only get that out of a dedicated private NAS service like ours. Interesting, so security obviously a big deal. There's ransomware, there's hackers, there's a little bit of everything. Can you talk about the security side of your product? Sure. So we can definitely do that. Um, thanks. Yep. I want to make sure we pick it all up. <laughs> so security is paramount in everything. And since we are indeed a NAS controller, we're dealing with your storage and your data is paramount. Your data yeah. is of the utmost importance. So we do a lot of things to make sure that data is protected and durable in, throughout its life cycle. So uh, that starts with things like encryption, uh, using the modern protocols, the file system protocols to connect to our storage in the back end. So whether that is using SMB, whether that's using NFS v4, uh, we're able to help you by leveraging those protocols to make sure everything's secure in flight. Gotcha. Once it hits our system and subsequently the cloud system, we're going to leverage all the encryption that's provided or inherent to the infrastructure. So mm -hmm. AWS provides encryptions for the storage that we sit in front of. Azure does the same thing. VMware does the same thing on-prem. Uh, we're going to leverage that. And then inherent to our technology, we're going to give you the ability to do things you'd expect from an on-prem NAS. So snapshotting, replication, high availability. We're doing everything we can, not only to make sure your data uh, maintains its integrity, but your data is always available. And we're using a combination of the services and of, that are available within the infrastructures, AWS, on-prem, hybrid, whatever that might be, as well as the technologies that we overlay on top of that. Gotcha. So, and I might be giving this mic right back to you. So one of the things that's been coming more apparent is that a lot of companies are choosing multi-cloud setups. It's because, granted, AWS is great, Azure is great, but what's really good is having a multi-cloud setup. How, does your, how do you guys fit into something like that where a client has, let's say it's financial data and it's a banking industry and they don't want just one replication of the data. They want it on every cloud so they can grab it. If, if Azure goes down, they can go to AWS. How do you guys fit into something like that? Well, the first part, the beauty of our product is that the same code works in both clouds. So you're not having to have a special version of the code to work in either one of them. Okay. And so by that, it makes our, the, the data very portable out of it too. We envision that more people are going to want this multi-cloud piece out of it too, that with our platinum product that's, that's being released here this month, you're going to have the ability now to go move data around and actually be able to move it between clouds and control it. So, okay, let's dive into that. That's, that's, let's dive into that for a second. Mm -hmm. So did you just say that using your product, if I'm in Azure one day and Microsoft makes me angry or whatever, they go down or they're having issues, I can just move it to AWS? 
you can do that. There's other other things you need to consider, depending on how big the data set is and mm -hmm. how, how long it's going to take from move from point A to point B. But theoretically, that since we run the same code in both sides, yes, it's, it's going to run the same. Yeah, no, that I mean that's that's obviously a very powerful feature because you have AWS and Azure, but then there's this other I call them a little guy, but they're growing up because they got a lot of money called Google Cloud. Will yep. eventually be, uh, it's considered the you know the third player at this point, at least in my opinion. But they've got a great leadership over there with Diane Green, and they are growing crazy fast. And so eventually you'll have real three yep. three players and being able to just pick and choose, that will be, um, I mean, that's honestly just great. That's that's kind of like the dream scenario, right? At the end of the day, yeah. is right. you go through these three vendors and just whoever's cutting prices, shift it around. The bulk of the customers we talked to have already made that cloud decision. Okay. In other words, that's been made at, usually at a corporate level that they're gonna go either AWS or go Azure with it. Mm -hmm. But when you talk to the larger enterprises, they've got a view in their mind that they're gonna leverage both. Okay. They just may not, be using the same applications or the same type of use cases on both type of environments. Can you uh, can, can you paint a picture of of, the, of your types of clients? Are, are these SMB? Are these enterprise? Like where where do your clients fall? We're falling in all those places. Okay. Because the companies that don't want to invest in infrastructure, they're going straight to the cloud. Sure. They're not making that first step on prem. Right. They're going straight into it. Your uh, your next level companies that are investing in their DevOps side, they're taking us. And then you've got your larger enterprises that are looking to try to go move these applications from off-prem, I mean, from on-prem to off-prem, they're looking for a way to accelerate that, that process. And the biggest thing we give them is that, that acceleration to the cloud that they don't have to re-architect. We, we also actually are working with a number of SaaS vendors or companies that have actually realized that they can use their data as a service, okay. and they want to actually run those those applications and data in the cloud, have the scalability, the performance, and the cost to do that. So we're cross-industrial, we work with SMB and enterprise, but there's some very specific like use cases that we're form fit for. Gotcha, and so uh, I, I always like to ask licensing questions because they are all, <laughs> they're always interesting. And so how, do, how does your product work? So a company wants to come and use SoftNAS. Is it on a per user basis, or how, do you, how does the product work on the financial side? Sure. Well. There's, there's two ways that you can go purchase this. We are on the AWS and Azure marketplaces. Okay. So you can go out there and, you, and when you buy it from there, it's actually on an hourly base. Ah. Just like you get your compute, get your storage, everything's built on an hourly base out of it. Now, if you go through our channel partners, you get the ability to buy it on a BYOL basis, bring your own license. And those are on an annual type subscription. Okay. So really depending on how you want to consume SoftNAS, mm -hmm. you've got your choices between having that marketplace front or that, that more of a direct touch through our channel partners. What do you what is more popular? Are people do you see more do you have more clients in the cloud or more kind of like the on prem? Definitely the cloud. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably a ninety ten split between cloud cloud customers and on prem customers. That, I honestly thought it would have been the inverse of that, and I don't. I don't know exactly why. Maybe I just thought of SoftNAS as being more of a an on-prem solution, but clearly you guys. Well, if it's well, 90 it's definitely not. We were born in the cloud. Yeah. yeah. And so being born in the cloud, you've got a product that was always been optimized for the cloud versus trying to take some of our competitors will take their on-prem their hardware product and try to bolt it into the cloud. Gotcha. So let, let's just talk about that for a second. So if you guys were born in the cloud, can you just tell me a little background about the company, how it got started, and, and just the genesis of SoftNAS? Sure, go ahead, John Mark. Yeah, the, the company actually was started six years ago by Rick Braddy. He's the founder, the CEO, and the CTO. And at that time, the, the focus was really on how to address using the cloud cost effectively and high performance. And so we are really like, um, the have the richest history with regard to uh, NAS services in the cloud. Sure. And that whole concept of virtualization is really the underpinning of the company. So pure software, and the company is Houston based, and we have a virtual workforce um, all over the world. And um, our, our, as, as um, Trace said, we're actually working both with customers directly and then through a growing partner channel worldwide. Interesting, so if you guys are six years old, Azure is ballparking, commercially available, eight years old. So you guys really were on that kind of leading edge of here's this cloud thing. AWS was obviously around, but Azure was just growing up at that point. So you guys really are early on, early adopters of that type of technology. It's amazing out of it, because when we walk into many enterprises, we're already the, the, the leading 
thought leader around cloud hmm. because of our experience of just working in cloud. Interesting. And, and typically, like Trace said, most of the time when people call us, they've already made a selection for the, their public cloud platform. Okay. And, and their boss or they've decided on a project to move to the cloud and then they encounter a problem doing something so they call us up so they've already decided to go and migrate apps and data to the cloud but they need a solution that's actually going to allow them to get the job done whether it's like we're you know teaming with veeam around cloud backup mm -hmm. and data archival or as i said around you know SaaS enabling apps and data gotcha so very cloud centric perfect little segue there uh can you just talk about your integrations with Veeam? Because we're at Veeam on. Let's, how, do, how do you guys tie in? Certainly. So one of the cool things about SoftNAS is that we can use object storage just like we can use block storage. Ah, okay. So what that means is we're going to take that object storage platform that is historically only accessible via API. I mean, somebody's programming that access. Mm -hmm. We're going to turn that into something that you can access via a standard SIF share or a standard mm -hmm. NFS export, you're going to mount to that. And what that means from a Veeam perspective is once SoftNAS is installed, we now have that extremely durable object storage at our hands, at our fingertips. So now all we need to do within Veeam is set that SoftNAS share as a target for our backups. Okay. And what we've done is we've modified the underpinnings of our software to accommodate the special needs that Veeam's might, Veeam users might have. The, you know, the full synthetic merges, those mm -hmm. synthetic backups, et cetera, so that it can be leveraged on object storage continuously without causing any hiccups for IO or throughput or anything along those lines. Interesting, okay. So that, that kind of paints the, the picture, at least for myself personally, about how SoftNAS ties into, obviously, Veeam, who is doing a lot of backup and recovery, and they're, uh -huh. they're trying to expand out there. So that's how you guys bolt on. What other type of scenarios is SoftNAS being used in outside of the Veeam world? You've got a couple other ones where you've got uh, customer A who's had a uh, customer facing application and now they want to move this to the cloud. Okay. Because they, because they, they want to have that agility, they want to have that cost savings piece they can give the customer that they can charge on a subscription basis. So what we're able to do is take that existing application that maybe a customer has put many, many years of IP, mm -hmm. enable them to lift it to the cloud without having to go change the back end, which is the hardest part, is how do we take care of the storage? Gotcha. So that becomes a key piece of their overall cost of goods because for them to go sit there and rewrite that sto that, that particular application could make it cost prohibitive to make it cloud enabled. Gotcha. Inter gotcha. I'm trying to follow the, the leaps yep. in my head there. Yeah. Yep. Um, so one of the questions I like to kind of wrap these things up with is, is what's next for you guys? Where, where are you headed? What's your roadmap? What can you talk about and say, okay, here's where we're at today and here's where we're headed for tomorrow? Okay. I think the exciting part you can see with SoftNAS is that we've made our mark out there about creating shared storage for the cloud, which has enabled customers this acceleration to the cloud to get it there quicker. But we view ourselves more than just a point solution, that we're actually a data cloud platform. And what we mean by that is that you're going to want to, as we talked about earlier, use multiple platforms. But how do I move this data around? Because now if I'm going to take care of advantage of the cloud, I may have data in disparate places. I may be an engineering firm that has multiple offices around the world. How do I push all that data to one repository? Or how do I push it back? I could be a customer that's got factories all over the world. How do I take all this data that they're deliver that they're producing and push it to the cloud? Sure. So the actual transportation of data and orchestration of this data is where our future, and that future is going to be, be, be done here this month. <laughs> that's that's a real quick future, but that's a good thing. Like as you started talking about factories, I started thinking IoT, IoT. and I, all that data that's coming out. I mean, they talk about smart cars coming online yep. and IoT coming online. But the amount of data that is going to be produced in the next five years is just it's unfathomable. Yes. I, I honestly think at this point, because cars alone will put out a petabyte of data a month some by some estimates so it's you gotta have some way to move that data around yeah it, 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 it just can't fall on the floor right it's got to be used it's got to be used so what's the best way after if somebody watches this what's the best way to find you guys reach out and contact you what's the best way to get in contact with softnas uh the best way to do is that go to our website uh www.softnas.com and we've got to contact us there so if you'll go there and and just press the button and fill out the information. It'll get to our teams here and we get turned right around. Or you can go to either the Azure Marketplace or the 
AWS Marketplace and do a search for SoftManage and you'll find us there too. I would definitely encourage people to go to our website. We've actually just updated it and we've organized it by the, these 18 different jobs that we find people have difficulties when they're migrating to the cloud. Okay. So I'd, I'd visit softnas.com as a first step. Perfect. Well, gentlemen, thank you for coming by our, uh, our little podcast booth here. And everyone else, thank you for tuning in for another episode of The Petri Dish.